Hey guys, it's Jim and welcome back to another podcast special on the channel and normally in these podcast discussions we talk about gangster films and crime films from directors such as Martin Scorsese but we're going to talk about in this one Martin Scorsese's venture into children's films is this Scorsese's Christmas film Hugo from 2011 is very much so Scorsese trying something completely different and giving us a snowy Paris wonderful uh, staggering adventure film for children and for families and this is a film where Martin Scorsese really shows his love for cinema obviously we'd seen it in films such as Goodfellas and Casino from Scorsese you know he was always making down and dirty films gritty films which showed his love for cinema but Hugo shows his love for cinema that really touches us on an emotional level for you know there's a lot of references to world cinema in this you know a lot of references to silent cinema in this and a lot of references to this that melancholy sentimental um coming of age cinema that we all loved and hugo of course tells the story of hugo who is a child in a railway station in paris in the 1930s who lives alone working the clock because his father dies and his uncle leaves him and all he can do is you know stay there hide there and work the clocks but he wants to get a automaton to work that his father left him and that's kind of his life goal now to get the parts to make this automaton work but he ends up discovering a kind of mystery surrounding the uh, filmmaker George Melies played by Ben Kingsley and he meets his goddaughter Isabel, played by Chloe Grace Moretz. Kind of becomes a little um, adventure there. And you also have in this Sasha Baron Cohen as the railway inspector, which is a, w- a wonderful performance um, where he's just constantly hunting Hugo throughout the film. You know, Hugo isn't set at Christmas time, but I think you could call this Scorsese's Christmas movie just based on the cinematography of it and just based on the look of it obviously is in a snowy Paris and it's just gorgeous to look at it really really is one of Scorsese's most beautiful films it's stunning presentation it just if you feel icy watching Hugo the feeling of um, Hugo is just cold and um, Christmassy it really is and it just has that sparkle to it. And I really do feel like, again, that Martin Scorsese was making a statement with this like no other. He wanted to capture those childhood feelings. He wanted to capture that confusion of being a child. He wanted to capture that stress of being a child and the fact that you feel alone trying to make sense of the world a lot of the time as a child. It's all about that journey of coming of age. And I feel like this is one of Scorsese's most underrated films, if not his most underrated film of all time because I actually think Hugo is a stunning piece of work. I actually think it's a staggering film. I really, really do. Obviously, Asa Butterfield plays Hugo, and he's a child who has seen great tragedy, but he's so likeable because he's still trying. And your heart goes out to him because the only thing he has in his life is this automaton. He's just auto-focused on that because he doesn't know how to make sense of the world without finishing his father's automaton. So he's so alone, but he's so driven by this purpose. And, you know, at the start of the film, he has these cold exchanges with Ben Kingsley's character, where Ben Kingsley is just horrible to Hugo because he sees him as a you know, a ragamuffin, and Hugo can't tell him why he is stealing parts. And he can't tell him why he's, um, you know, doing what he, he did because he doesn't trust anyone. He doesn't want to let anyone in. And the film is gradually Hugo letting people in. And... Hugo becoming friends with uh, Isabel who gives Hugo that hope and that friendship to open up more and Asa Butterfield one of his introductory performances great performance of facial expressions great convincing emotional scenes great convincing look of the character you know Hugo really does look like a boy who would be on the streets of Paris in the 1930s he really does look that convincing and you know it really is Hugo's story of um not giving up Hugo's story of maintaining hope and a purpose and what a wonderful celebration of cinema I know the way that Scorsese presents um, films of the time is so magical he presents cinema as this otherworldly dreamlike incredible place and there's just this is a love letter to cinema because constantly the characters are talking about cinema as if it's 
this glorious wonder that we can't tangibly get to you know at one point George Méliès says have you ever wondered where your dreams are made it's here you know on a cinema set and it's just great at, at conveying that idea that cinema is again where dreams are made it's a, it's a magical place it's a mythical place and it gives you a sense of what filmmakers managed to do back here you know the incredible staggering things that they actually accomplished with such limited technology back here with just imagination there's such imagination there's such passion and wonder to cinema in this and it also really is a film about um the mechanics of things how things work you know hugo fixes things hugo wants to fix the automaton he can and it's about parts and how things can be fixed and how different things come together it's about craft it's about art this film and that may sound incredibly boring but it's not it's fascinating watching Hugo trying to fix an automaton it really is because there's so much more to it than that it's a link to his father it's a link to closure and obviously you've got the clocks working in this so it's all about things ticking along and things um, coming together and, and the craft work of making them um, come to life it really is about that scenes of the clock are beautiful the way that Scorsese will pull out when Hugo looks out of the clock and gives you that view you know all the shots of Paris and the uh, railway station and the zoom ins and the fast moving camera at times just really captures the bustle of the railway station I love the character of Sasha Baron Cohen as Inspector Gustave he's so hilarious it's one of the best performances I've seen from Sasha Baron Cohen because while I like Borat and I like those films I've never really viewed him as an actor but in this one he genuinely acts he genuinely acts you know he's so uh, mean and horrible the way he goes around this railway just picking up orphans and wanting to take them to the orphanage to teach them a lesson and you know but as th things go along he becomes more of a sympathetic character and we get to know more about him and it's very very expertly done and Sasha Bronx's character performance really really softens gradually but there are these fantastic chase sequences uh, which are incredibly exciting when the inspector is chasing Hugo around the station chases him up to the clock where Hugo hangs out on one of the clock hands to avoid being caught there is a real sense of urgency whenever Hugo is being chased in this there's there's chase scenes where you are just on the edge of your seat because you know that everything Hugo has worked for and everything he wants and everything he is important to him will go out the window if he gets taken to the orphanage and the inspector doesn't understand this so it really is a meeting of worlds in this and it's all about Hugo being on the edge constantly of everything slipping away from him you know it gives you the feelings of fantasy and magic in a quite realistic world quite grounded world nothing really happens in this that's out of the ordinary it's all possible and that's what I think is great about it. it's all possible but it hits you in the same way that those fantasy films do it really does let the magic of what actually exists in the world and the possibilities of people and what they do when they work together and come together and get creative those possibilities are what is presented as magic in Hugo I haven't really talked about Ben Kingsley but he's glorious because you know in certain moments where he's he's cold and cut off from Hugo and he's dead behind the eyes but you get to see that there is something to this guy where he's not a bad person that gradually unfolds it really is a film about childhood but it's also a film about nostalgia and adulthood and not forgetting and being proud of what you've done in your life and not getting resentful as you get older it is a film about looking back as well it's a film about age it's a film about time passing it's a film about should you let go of things once it gets to a certain point it's a film about um regret and sorrow and times changing and your heart breaking along with that losing what you used to have but it's a film about the fact that you can regain that it's just an unbelievable piece of work Hugo it really is it's not just a children's family film you should watch for Christmas it's a children's family film you should watch and be prepared to be blown away everyone should definitely watch it this Christmas it, it, it really is Scorsese's Christmas film but also Scorsese's love letter to cinema have any of you guys seen Hugo let me know in the comments below if not watch it then let me know in the comments below thanks for watching click on another discussion video on the screen now please subscribe if you're a movie geek just like me i will see you guys in the next video